How's it going YouTube? We've got some more on this van to do. I want to get that finished. So the wheels have not arrived yet, but while I'm waiting for those, there's some more jobs I want to get finished on it. Right, where I remove this bike rack, there's these gaps in the spoiler. So what I've done is I've got another spoiler. I've got one there. I've already painted it that military gray. So that'll match in with everything at the back end. So we've got to remove the spoiler from there and then stick that one on. So that's the first job. I also want to get this light bar finished and get that wired up. I've got here a wiring loom, so it's got a little relay and everything in. We'll wire that up, so I'll show you guys how to do that as well. We'll get that wired up so that light bar will work. I've also got this Atoto dash cam that I want to wire up to my stereo system. So we'll have a look at that while we're at it. That shouldn't take too long. And I'm assuming the wheels did eventually turn up because you're obviously watching this video now. But while I'm waiting for them, I'm going to get these other bits done. First job is get this spoiler off. Right, this has been stuck on with a tiger seal, I think it was. So what I've got is I've got a great big knife. I'm going to prise it under there, push it up at the same time while I'm cutting it, and see if I can slowly cut it off. So that's the first job, we'll get this off. that's that one off now that one's ready to go on up here you can actually see now actually how bad i painted the vehicle in the beginning i didn't prep these very well at all did i these areas but i've got a whole new plan for the roof anyway so keep an eye out for that we're going to look at that one later but for now i've trimmed this back as much as i can with a knife i've given it a good clean with isopropyl just to make sure we've got a nice edge to stick onto I'm going to stick it down with some of this just to just to make sure it doesn't come off and it's nice and waterproof. So I'm going to trial fit that, stick it down with that, and then I'll see you back in a minute. Right, I've had a little change of mind. Uh, rather than sticking this down and having a bit of hassle every time I want to take it off, because I am thinking about putting a ladder up the back, and there's one I've seen that hooks over these hinges, uh, so I might be fitting that one later, which means taking the spoiler off to cut a gap out, so I will have to take this off eventually anyway later. So what I'm going to do is I'll use these fixing holes. I've drilled a hole through there. I'm going to do the other side. I'll bolt it down and see how flush it looks as it is. If it's no good, then I'll stick it down and I'll put a brick or something on top just to hold it down because this was only a cheap spoiler. It's not the best fitting one in the world, but I'll get it bolted down and see what it looks like. Oh, that's all bolted up. What it was, it was like a two layer. So what I did is I, I drilled all the way through and then I drilled a bigger hole at this side so I can get the socket in. And then I've painted it all black there after I've put the bolt in just so it doesn't rust or anything. So both sides are done. That's bolted up as well. It actually doesn't fit too bad. There it is fitted. It's in the military gray, so it fits in with the rest of the van now. So there we are, new spoiler. That's one job done off the list. Right, next job, let's have a look at this loom for the light bar. Uh, this is fairly straightforward. We've got one end which goes to the battery, which is there, which has the relay in. That's just positive and negative. And then the other end splits off into two. One should go to the light and the other one should go to a switch on the dashboard. Just untangle it. Right, there we are. There's the two. This has actually got two cables, so I'm assuming you can do two spotlights if you want. Uh, we don't need to, we've just got one, so I'll cut it. And there's the switch for the dashboard. It's got a, a positive as well, so it's it's got a light on it, this one. I've already got a switch wired in for the light bar that's on the vehicle now. We're just going to tag into that one, so when we turn that one on, it'll turn both of these on. But these are pretty straightforward to fit, and quite an essential item if you've got a light bar, because you need a relay switch for it. Uh, I'll put a link to this or one similar to this in the description so if anybody's buying a light bar they can get one of these as well it just makes everything a lot easier so let's get that on the vehicle right I've already got that plate out at the back from uh, when we was doing the suspension I left that out purposely so it makes it a bit easier because we've got a run through there that we can get to the inside of the vehicle so this is the one that I've got fitted now this relay here I'll tidy all this up actually 
those cables there go down to the switch in, that's in the dashboard so we'll literally we'll just tag into those but I'm going to fit the other relay at the side of this one I'll tidy this up make it look a bit tidier I've got to run a cable back through there because if you remember that light bar we brought the cable down and we left it in this pillar here so I've got to run a cable from this to power the light up in the car and up to this pillar there to wire it up Right, first job for me, I've got to strip this out. There's just a few screws to take this out and then I can get behind the dash. Strip that pillar out and then I can get to that wiring. And it's I need it out anyway, because I've got to fit that dash cam to this. So it, it means running a wire up there anyway, so I can fit the dash cam behind the mirror. So I'll do all that while it's out as well. So I'll strip this out and I'll see you back in a minute. That's out, that literally took five minutes. Right, if I get a torch, and shine it down there you can see where the cables come in from the front so that's where we're coming in and then we're going to go up the back up to this which is the light bar cable there and we'll join in there so i'm going to get that loom fitted and get it poked through here right this is a switch for my other light bar so i'm going to wire into this in the battery bay for the new light bar as well so this one switch will turn on both light bars it's pointless having them on separate switches Right, that's in. That's all wired up. Uh, tidied up is probably a strong word, but it looks better than what it did. But that works now anyway. Let's have a look. Right, we've got both light bars working off of this switch. We'll go and test these in the dark as well soon, because I think they'll be great. That little one on its own used to be really good, so with the big one on top as well, they're going to be really bright. Next job. I want to get this a Toto dash cam uh, DVR installed on while well, we've got the dashing bits. So this needs a little micro SD card which plugs into the side and then this has got a little loom that's compatible with my A6 uh, Toto radio. If you've not seen my videos on these A6 radios, have a look and uh, you'll see which ones I mean. But these are compatible with the A6 radio. So I'm going to get a micro SD card and I'm going to get this installed. This has just got one loom that goes down and it plugs into the USB slot in the back of my radio. And let's get this set up and have a look at it. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it up on the windscreen behind my mirror and then I'm going to plug in that cable and then I've got to run it all the way across down through there and take it into the back of the radio so that's the job I'll do now I'll come back to you when this is in and plugged in right there it is all plugged in I've put that back in it's fitted up there look and then the wire I've just ran it down there down underneath and in there let's see what it does when we turn it on you can see I've already got a HD DVR app. It was in the menu there already. So if I go back, if I click on that, it's literally just starting up straight away. I don't have to do anything. It's oh, I've got lots of reflections from all this. So I'll clear that up in a second and we'll have a proper look. But as you can see, it's already recording. Uh, it's got lots of little menus. So we can do things like we can make it small. So it, it sits there and even while you're using the Apple CarPlay. It sits in that corner, just sat there nicely. So you can you can do that if you want to. If this HD DVR app's not there, I believe what you do is you go into File Manager, uh, USB, and there's a little program there that you can run and that'll install it. But on mine, it was already there. Right, that's it. That's all done. That's actually a good picture. And as soon as you've got your ignition on, it's already recording. It records onto that micro SD there. So nice little bit of a fail safe there if anything happens. So now we've now got a dash cam. Right, so that's pretty much done now. Uh, we're just waiting for these wheels. So unless I can think of anything over the next few days while I'm waiting for these wheels to come, I'll see you back in a second when we've got the wheels. Final piece of the puzzle. The wheels are here. Let's have a look. These are Tomahawk Outlaw 17 inch on BF Goodridge 245 65 17 tyres. And I think they look great. They look absolutely massive as well. So hopefully they'll fit on the van. These are in like a, a matte black finish and that's going to fit right in with the style. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get all these properly unpacked get them on the van and let's have a proper look at the finished product right where's my knife 
Right, that's all four unpacked. I've got a set of bolts with them as well. So I'm going to jack the van up, get them on the van, and let's have a look. Right, wheels are on, and I think they look great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wait till tomorrow because it's getting a bit dark now. And then we'll go somewhere else and have a proper look at this where we can stand back and see what it looks like. So let's go. I've nipped over the bridge to Costa del Sheppe just so we can have a, a look uh, in a bit better environment. I actually came here because last time I came to this car park the road was terrible. It's actually been resurfaced now so it's not that bad. I was going to use this as an example of why I wanted to lift the suspension but it's okay. So let's stand back and have a look what this looks like with these wheels on. there that's how it's looking now now it's all finished and i think that's looking really good everything matches in really nice this light is super harsh so i think the best thing we can do is we can get back to the house and have a quick talk about it right back at home it's still harsh light but it'll be all right i like it how it's ended up this this is the look i was after what i might do actually is if you look down the profile of these back wheels here you can you can see there's still quite a bit under the arches. I've got the 10 mil spacers still there, so I might put those on, but I'll leave it like this for now because I think that's looking all right. Uh, these back lights, I've actually, I've ordered some more. They should be coming in the next couple of days. Some really posh ones from Transport HQ. So we'll get do a video on fitting those as well because they should be just plug and play, but they're going to look posh. Uh, there's one thing I need to check. I need to check these tire pressures because I don't know what they actually came in at. A uh, good chance to open this actually because I got sent this a bit ago. There's a, an old one because I've taken that out of my van ready to put the new one in. Uh, these are a great piece of kit. Let me just open this up and we'll have a look. Uh, this is their, their new version. I've not opened this up yet but as we can see it's a, a nice kind of hard case whereas the, their old one was a a bit of a canvas case these are basically a jump starter and a compressor all in one these are definitely on my essential to have in the camper list i usually carry that one but i've taken it out so because because i'm putting this one in so i'll have a quick look inside in here you get things like these jumper leads so we they can plug into this unit because it's a jumper pack uh, because obviously it's a jumper pack it's got battery as well and then so we can check the tire pressures without having to plug it into your 12 volt socket or anything like that you can actually use this as a power pack as well it's got usb sockets on it and the other one has got a torch on so i'm, I'm assuming this one's got a light on it somewhere as well oh there it is yeah so you've got your lights and everything else so let's go and plug this in see what the tire pressures are they will be actually down in my description i'll put a link to this uh jf eggwell have also given a discount voucher for this as well so i'll put links to all this these are a great piece of kit uh, right before we run off just so you know uh this bit here with the jump leads this there's a little flap here there that plugs in in there and then you can jump your vehicle off of that as well on the jumper pack right that's that plugged in let's put this onto the tire uh, it's got this on button at the bottom press that and we can see there we've got 40 psi in it now uh, you can set it up and down you see the little bit flash in there you can you can set what you want the target to be uh, press inflate we've got inflate with wireless and inflate with adapter so i'm assuming we'll put it to wireless <laughs> 40 is the target, so it's inflated for a second and then stopped. Um, I'll probably actually keep it at about 40 PSI for now. I'm going to check all the rest just to make sure they're at 40 PSI as well. I think if you press and hold the power button, yeah, it turns the lights on, look. So you can see what you're doing as well. And then it's got a little battery gauge there, so you can see how much battery is left in it. Right, that's all them all done now. A couple of them were, was a bit less than 40, so they're all pumped up to 40 now. If anybody's got any suggestions of what tyre pressures I should be running these at, let me know, but I'll, I'll leave them at 40 for now and see how they go. MR2 had a flat tyre. Right, I'm going to pack that away and get that back in the van, 
Uh, don't forget there's some links down below for that. It turns out that's not the old one. This is the old one. I've just found it under the seat in the van. Right, that's the van as complete as I can get it for now. Like I said, I've got some real lights coming in the next few days. I'll do a separate video on those because they're quite posh. Right, I want to say a big thanks to Paul from Attitude Customs because he helped me get a few bits for this van. Uh, he does some really posh stuff. There's some nice motors in his uh, workshop so one day we'll get down there we'll have a look see what he does then if anybody wants to get in touch with him to get any work done he does airbrushing he does really posh cars so we'll get down there and we'll have a look see what he does at some point might put the spacers back on later we'll think about that once i'm out in the wilderness we'll have a look at this light bar as well have a look at that a bit later on i'm just trying to track down a flywheel for the v8 conversion on the mr2 so hopefully I'll be able to get that and then we can do a part two on that and get the engine and the gearbox properly bolted together so I'll get that done soon as well. Now the van's a different style I'll give it a little bit and then I'll do a, a full once around the whole camper and do a, a refreshed video of everything. Like the video if you liked it, like this series, uh, watch the rest of the video so you can see how we got to this stage if you've not seen them. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers. Yeah.